Hello, Namaste. I am back with the next set of lectures on data models, wherein we will be looking at first uh, lecture is in terms of what do you mean by a vector data model. And when we look at vector, uh, look at the previous class that we have understood, we have understood what do we mean by a data model. A data model is in terms of how do we represent the real world representation using rules into converting it to a data or a database which actually can be queryable, it is a quantifiable or qualitative process. And now in order to represent that we have different types of data, we have uh, continuous data and we have a discrete data. So when I say continuous data, so you, you have a continuous set of values represented from a geographical location whereas you have a discrete data which has discrete values that is very specific has a boundary and it is represented over a geographical location. And this to represent the continuous or a discrete data, we have fields and objects. Fields normally represent a continuous data and objects represent a, a, a discrete data. So when you are looking at this, the first kind of data model representation that you can find is nothing but a vector data model. In today's class, you would understand what do you mean by a vector data model? how it is represented and what for example if I, as I previously said vector data model is normally represented your point line and a polygon. What are the different ways of storing a point line and a polygon? You have different data models, well known data models like spaghetti gate data model and other one is a topological data model. So both of the data models uh, can be used, spaghetti is a very simple data model whereas topology is a quite complex data model. So we look at both of these data models. And the last way is how do you store your attribute data? How do you store the entire data that you have and how do you retrieve it? So what are the different methods that uh, you have to store? And if uh, there are certain uh, errors that should not be always uh, uh, performed in your database, uh, the, uh, that also we will look at in this particular class. So uh, when we are looking at from the real world model to GIS data model, spatial data as I said is a numeric representation which analyzes, describes real world features in GIS. That is what is nothing but a spatial data. So we, when I say spatial data, you have a real world data with the geographic coordinates associated with that is nothing but a spatial data. Now spatial data depicts a real world in basically two different data models. One is called an object based model, other one is called a field based model. Okay. When I say object, object model is uh, can uh, easy has a different entities which are separable whereas field data model is more of a continuous data. So GIS can organize rea uh, reality through the data models. Okay. It can completely convert the real data to the digital data through the data models. When you look at all sp uh, special data models, you can either put them into vector data model or into a raster data model or both. So both of them are possible in the end in the same data model uh, but these are in different layers. Okay. Now when we look at the vector data model, each real world objects are represented as a point, a line and a polygon. Let us take an example, we have let us assume that we have a building. Okay. We have a building and surrounding the building we have number of trees and next to the trees is the driveway or you have your roads that are actually there. So now if you have to represent this as a real world phenomena into your database, the first thing is you capture building, the edges of a building that becomes a polygon because it is a closed loop of connecting line segments, then you have lines. Okay. So lines that are represented in a form for road. So when you are actually uh, routing a road in, in the database, you convert it normally as a line, though it can be very clearly represented uh, uh, based on a polygon. But normally when you are actually representing in the real world, it, uh, in the uh, data model, you represent most of these roads as a connecting line segments. Then you have points, for example, uh, it may be identifying the particular building or number of trees around the building. So all of these becomes a point. So number of points connected will form lines 
and each of the line segments that are connected forms areas areas are nothing but polygons which are the representation of a vector data model so whenever someone asks you what is a vector data model the first thing that you have to answer is it is a point line and a polygon so always this has to be remembered okay so plp is what you mean by a vector data model the point line and a polygon so always every data on the earth surface can be represented in a point line and a polygon so remember when, whenever you have a vector data model uh, you are representing the real world features in points lines and a polygon whichever data it is whichever the real world phenomena it is okay so when you are looking at a vector data model as points points is a fundamental object you can represent any building any uh, corner of a road with with a point point represents a discrete please be careful here discrete xy location okay it is represented only by a discrete xy location that is nothing but a points a city may be a point but when you go into looking at city boundary it becomes a polygon okay but city for example if you see there are number of cities that have been represented here tier 1 and tier 2 cities okay bangalore is a point tumkur is a point mysore is a point vellore is a point okay but if you are representing the end, uh, the connection between bangalore and mysore then it becomes a line number of line segments and if you are representing a boundary of bangalore then it becomes a polygon okay so now we understood what do you mean by points point is just an x y coordinate okay but when you have line or a polyline is connected by sequence of points if there are number of points that are connected as shown here you have a node you have a vertex you have a vertex number of vertexes and finally you end with a node this becomes a line okay so now where each end points are usually called as nodes not the end if if you have one line segment here and then you have a connected then this becomes a vertex and not as a node where it ends it becomes a node okay so and the inter intermediate uh, values are called as vertex or number of values are called vertices if we know that the start and the node coordinates of each line or a polygon or a polyline we can compute the length of a polyline so which means length of a road if you want to compute then you should know what is a starting point two nodes that is a start node and an end node then lines are used to represent features that are more linear in nature for example it may be a, a river it may be stream rail road all of these features so uh, any any features that has number of points that are connecting in in a certain fashion from a start node to the end node then it becomes a, a feature of a line and when we look at the third uh, kind of representation it is nothing but a polygons if you see this uh, this map this is representing a number of lakes in the city of bangalore okay so when you see this is nothing but uh, a blue color is representing lakes so when i say polygon or areas or surfaces this is defined by a close set of lines or sometimes called as polylines okay so you have if you see this image here down so you have this as a line okay second line third line so these are nodes okay not the vertices these are nodes node 1 and node 2 there is a start node and end node for this line this is a start node and end node for this line there is a start node and end node for this line start node and end node for this line and start node and end node for this line finally reaching the same start node of the first line so this becomes a completely a polygon okay so normally in a line the start node and end node are different whereas in a polygon the end node is nothing but a start node always okay polygons identified as close set of lines are used to define features such as water body lake rock type land use administrative boundaries all of these are represented by a polygons this example which i have given here is a set of lakes in uh, south uh, east of bangalore where uh, uh, you can see these these are number of lakes that have we have extracted from a map source okay 
So, then when we look at the vector data model, all vector elements are represented as using continuous geometry that is point represents a position, line, a length and a polygon and area. So, when someone says find out the length, then you have to look at the number of line segments that are there. If you are computing the same area, so look at the en entire loop of a polygon and look at the area. If you are looking at a point, then it is only a point. If for example, if I have to uh, give you the location of this particular building, then I will just say the, the centroid of this particular building, the centroid point of this particular building which represents this particular building's geographic location. Okay. So, that is how in a vector data model it is represented, point is nothing but a position, line is a length and polygon is an area that is what I am representing it here. If there is a lake here, it is representing a point, okay. when there is a line, it is representing the connected uh, line segments and is representing a uh, length and if it is a building a point here or even these points represent the position of that particular place, the geographic coordinates. Okay. If you look at your database, if you have a point, line and a polygon, give an id as 1, then attributes as a and b, then the coordinates is 1 comma 1, okay, because that points geographic location has a single coordinates. But when you look at line, so if for example, if I have given it as a unique id is 10 and attributes as c and d, any I have just given a random attributes and when you look at its coordinates, you will have a number of strings, okay, start this is a starting node and this is an ending node. Okay. So, when you have an area, it let us say I have given the uh, its unique ID as 100. So, it is a closed polygon, it will have several number of uh, coordinate values. So, this is a starting node okay. and this is the this is again another node, but the end node will be the same as a starting node, it is a closed polygon. Okay. So, this is how a vector data model is represented. I have not in the in the area part I have not represented the end node. So, end node would be the same as a starting node. So, please keep that in mind. Okay. So, when in a vector data model as I said objects are defined by their x y coordinates in a planar coordinate form. Okay. When you look at the position, the precision of coordinates virtually are infinite. Okay. But are quite machine dependent. So, it is dependent on how you represent it, how you actually work on it. However, when you look at the accuracy, most often limited, most often is quite limited. So, this uh, whatever when you look at the vector data model, you have the accuracy which is quite limited, but the precision denotes the degree of agreement between the several measurement of quantity. So, it, uh, it is not uh, though we say it is not precise, but the precision is uh, dependent on what are what you are actually measuring on the ground uh, to the database. Then accuracy is denotes the closeness of measurements of its true, value, true values, but it is always quite limited in terms of understanding. Okay. So, when you look at the vector data models, this can be structured and many different ways of storing geometrical information. You have two types of vector data model. One is spaghetti model, spaghetti model is quite a uh, simpler model, it is very simple model in terms of representation, whereas topological model is a quite complex model, the way the data has to be represented is extremely complex. So, difference between them is in the level of structure and organization of data, how it the data is structured and how the data is organized. So, that is a difference between these two types of models and when we look at the spaghetti model spaghetti model the point is represented in a form of x y coordinate pair like your vector data or in a form of a, a vector data. So, the line is a series of x y coordinates as represented the way. So, we there is no change in definition area is a series of x y coordinates with the first and the last coordinate being identical this is nothing but a closed loop it is the same definition I would not again deal into that, but when you are when you are looking at the point model, points and lines would be encoded in a similar way, there is no difference. There is no relationship between point lines and areas when you are looking at a spaghetti model. So, you 
if you have points here these do not have any relationship between uh, points or lines and a polygon ok. It is just representations and when you are looking at a line each line is considered as a single strand ok. For example, this is the entire line this is your starting node is A then you have a law you have vertices here you have this line segment. So, all of these are nothing but a single strand ok. Each of this strand in this model for example, A D is a strand where which I have represented here it has a coordinates of 2 comma 5 and 4 comma 4. If you see A is 2 comma 5 and D is 4 comma 4 you see here it is 4 yeah it is 4 comma 4 ok. So, that is how you represent A D whereas, when you look at A B it is 2 comma 5 comma 2 comma 2 ok. You see here the A is 2 representing 2 and 5 ok and when I when as B is representing nothing but uh, 2 comma 2 here ok. So, each of these segments is considered as a single strand it is a complex shape, but it is a single strand ok. The more and more strands of spaghetti can be added these strands are called as nothing but a spaghetti. So, you have points points are represented now you have line segments each line segment is a strand which is represented here. Now, let us go into polygon mode. So, any polygon that lies adjacent to each other must be made up of at least two strands of spaghetti or two lines ok. Each polygon must be uniquely defined by its own set of x y coordinate pairs ok. Boundary cannot be shared by adjacent polygons that that is one rule that it has ok. This creates if it if it shares it creates a redundancy in data. For example, when I say A, A is a polygon here ok it is bounded by 1 comma 4, 1 comma 6, 6 comma 6, 6 comma 4, 4 comma 4, 1 comma 4 ok. If you look at this, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 line segments 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 line segments ok. So, so 6 line segments. Now, when you look at this 1, 2, 3, 4 line segment 1 comma 4 is a starting point here if you look at this this is 1 point 2 3 and this is the line ok. So, this is how uh, the square the polygon model is built. Now, you when you look at advantages of this particular model it is simpler to understand and store you do not have to use much of uh, the computational capability also then you have a stand you have standard graphic models which are a standard graphic manipulation techniques that can be used on a closed loop polygons. The only uh, the major disadvantages here is the spatial relationships need to be determined for each analysis it it cannot the connectivity and contiguity otherwise it it cannot be used in its own way. Then each then redundancy of data is uh, there in the entire system the data is quite redundant then you have preferred system for very low end system because you if you have if you have a system where it is not computationally capable then spaghetti data model is something that you have to look at. And very importantly is that the geographical information or the topological information is difficult to analyze in it or it ha it lacks a topological information basically because everything is represented as point line and polygons and the entire thing is nothing but strands and spaghettis. So, but when we look at the topological model it is characterized by inclusion of uh, topological information whatever is a, a disadvantage there is an advantage here. The spatial re relationship between adjacent features in a data set always exists whereas, when you look at the spaghetti model you always used to compute the relationships between them whereas, here you know what is the relationship which exists all throughout the way you are storing. Then records x y coordinates of a special features and encodes special relationship between them. It is also called as arc node data model because normally it is in the form of a line and a node. So, arc is nothing but a load line and node is nothing but a end point of a line or a point where two or more line connects that is nothing but a node. 
So, it is in the model is called arc line or arc node uh, sorry arc node kind of a model. So, topological model is also called as arc node model whereas, arc is nothing but a line node is end point of a line. So, when we are looking at the topology, topo uh, topology is a set of rules ok be uh, specific here topology is a set of rules that model the relationship between the neighboring points ok. So, in a spaghetti model we are not worried about point lines and a polygon. So, it is about points, it is about lines, it is about polygons. So, it is completely different, but here it is between neighboring points, lines and a polygons ok. It is a relationship between neighboring lines and points, lines and a polygon determines geometry sharing between them always ok. Topology is also concerned with preserving spatial properties when the forms are bent stretched or placed under similar geometrical transformations which are not happening in the spaghetti mode. Three basic topological principles you have to always look at is connectivity. How do you how do you define connectivity? How do you define area? How do you define the contiguity? If you understand all of these three things then topological data model representation is much extremely important or easier ok. When we look at the topology data model uh, for example, here if you are looking at this ok, the first uh, node node 1 is a point that is represented between 1 and 4. If you look at this uh, particular node uh, one, node 1 in uh, if you these are connected by 1 and 4, whereas node 2 is about 4 and 4 it is connected by 4 ok. When, when you look at the if you see this it is 4 and 4 ok, when the node 3 is 6 and 4 ok and no when you look at the node 4 it is between 4 here and 1 that is why you represent a point and when you are representing a polygon here a polylines A for example, if you are representing any of those uh, polylines it, it is represented in the form of 1, 4 and 5. It this particular polygon is bounded by 1, 4 and 5 these all of these three are different polylines ok. So, the similarly we represent the polygons. So, each of this line based on the line from where to where ok. In the left of that particular polygon you have an outside polygon you do not have any space I mean when I say outside polygon it means to say that there is nothing in between them and on the right you have a polygon which is named on it. So, that is how we read it. So, topology this is for uh, when you look at this it is a point this is when you look at it it is line and when you look at this it is about a polygon. So, point line and a polygon. So, always topological model has topological data inbuilt in it that is a biggest advantage of a uh, considering a topological data. So, when you are looking at uh, advantage it stores spatial relationship explicitly ok which is not done in a spaghetti model. It allows rapid calculation determination analysis of spatial relationships which is extremely important. Spatial analysis can be done without accessing coordinates you do not need coordinates, but you can do spatial analysis and always allows error detection that is extremely important in terms of when you are representing a data model. More complex disadvantages it is more it has a very complex data structure topology needs to be re established after each update preferred system for very high end system. If you have a very high end system and it is uh, very highly preferred ok. So, the we will we are coming to the last part of this particular lecture. So, we have understood what how are different types of uh, data models the vector data models the spaghetti and the topological data model. Now, we will look at the how do we store an attribute data. So, if I when the attribute data are normally stored separately from the coordinate data or in the same form, but the coordinate information is in a different columns whereas, attribute data is in a different column. So, when you are looking at feature identifier points or to an attribute table whenever you look at a feature it gives you an attribute table point attribute table 
line or an arc attribute table and a polygon attribute table. So, each of these would have a separate attribute table connected to it. Okay. Similarly, we can define points or line or attribute tables if the spatial features are for example, if it is a village, road etcetera, then you can uh, define the uh, attribute table in this way. For example, let us say this is a polygon here, okay. this is another polygon, right? this is the third polygon. Okay. I am representing area of this particular polygons here, the population here and the TFR. So, this gives this has nothing but my attribute information. Okay. So, the same ID will have the XY location of this particular polygon where it this is XY, this XY, this XY, this XY and finally, this and this. So, that will give me the entire information about that polygon. So, you have geographical information also, you have attribute information also. The very important point of uh, converting into database is to avoid redundancy. So, when you are storing uh, for example, the, this data this is about a province and the district data in the same table is quite inefficient. Why? Because province data need to be repeated for each district, right. So, if you have if you have number of district for example, here if you look at you have the same province that is repeated for all of these districts. So, this becomes redundant the population becomes redundant, but if you are representing something like this. So, you have a unique ID that is represented here you have a district that is represented here you have a population then you have a province. Now, this becomes more efficient or uh, database in terms of you if you are trying to put it as a relational database. So, you will say that these each and every ID has a particular relation that is attributed to it. So, where you build a relational database and you represent the province like this. So, that becomes a relational database which is actually relating all your attribute data to your ID. So, redundancy is the one that you have to remove from your uh, database. Now, if you ask me how do I actually remove the entire redundancy? Now, what, what I have done basically here is I have given province in a different database. If you have seen here Raipur and T, uh, T Nagar is represented here instead of representing it in the main database, I put it here. So, when I connect this with relations, it becomes the same database. So, you only thing is that it is stored separately, so that it is not in the same database you do not repeat it in the same database. So, now if you ask me why and how you actually have different uh, I mean how do you re remove this redundancy then it is how you do a normalization. So, when we look at different databases different ways of representing a database I will speak about normalization of a database how, how, how different normalization you have first uh, st uh, normalization, second step normalization. So, we look at so first form, second form, third form etcetera when we are looking at the database, but as of now it can be done using normalization. Okay. So, normally a relational database design provides the best storage efficiency, I will tell you what do you mean by relational database. Now, you uh, the late uh, now you have object oriented databases etcetera. So, we will look at all of these databases and when we come to the database point, but as of now we have to remove redundancy. So, you need to have a normalization for your data. Okay. So, that is that is what uh, you should remember. Then when you are storing attribute data at any uh, when, whenever you have any uh, data it is attribute data that has to be stored. So, always just storing a geographic coordinate will not give you any output when you have attribute information added to it then it gives added value to that database. Okay. In so, for example, in, in socio economic GIS applications attribute data component is often a very large component in a database. If you do not have an attribute data then that particular uh, thing is not even called a database it can be just a geographic base. Okay. For example, uh, few provinces hundreds of variables. So, huge of social economic any social economic surveys any physical survey etcetera will have a huge amount of attribute data without attribute data your database has no value. Okay. So, 
that that's what i wanted to speak about the uh, about uh, the subject in this class we have looked at what is a vector data model it's a point line and a polygon basically a spaghetti we have uh, data model we have looked at so each point is represented as its own and num each of the point has a different each of the line has different strands that is represented in a form of a coordinates then you have top uh, then you have polygons each of the polygons are represented by different strands that are connected together each of the strands together from a starting node to the end node forms a nothing but a uh, entire data model of a spaghetti when you look at topological data model it is nothing but a arc node data model arc is nothing but a line node is nothing but a point that is connecting uh, each of these line segments are is the end start and the end point in a uh, uh, polygon model then you have storing attributes data how do you store an attribute data i spoke about redundancy you you can always uh, uh, remove redundant data and make it uh, another uh, uh, database where whenever it is required it just populates into your uh, sheet where uh, wherever you want to do the analysis then uh, i also spoke about different attribute how do you actually look at attributes data how do you look at uh, different databases how do you actually remove redundancy the main form of uh, removing redundancy is using uh, normalization form you have different normalization form which we'll discuss so as of now this is what we had to discuss for today in the next session we would look at different raster data models so i would only speak about one different uh, one kind of raster data models so that's called as quad tree data model so the rest uh, probably i'll leave it out for you to explore okay thank you very much let's meet in the next class